Okay, with grade two, we've got a great choice of tracks, especially if you look at Cranked, Bone Crusher, and Buzzsaw as three really credible rock tracks. Scarred for Life, Hit It Harder Being a Blues, Faith Divide, a bit indie. Probably won't need to go looking further afield, but if you do, then take care because you've really got to make sure that what you play really is the right kind of standard. So don't take that at all too lightly. Other things you'll notice with grade two, especially for coming up from grade one, is you're playing quite a lot faster. Some of these tempi are really quite nippy. You're being asked to change from palm muting to free picking and back again quite often. And obviously you're ranging around the neck, you're sliding up and down, you're changing position quite a lot more than you ever were in grade one. You'll also find that there are a couple of places in different tracks where they're giving you the opportunity to play a sort of proto solo. I mean, obviously it's notated, not something you're making up yourself, but in those places, make sure that you do kind of stand forward with your sound a little bit more. And that leads me to say also that while there are no actual printed directions for dynamics, that's to say playing louder or softer in any of the pieces in the book, you will want to start to think about that kind of thing for yourself just to make sure that your playing isn't all very one dimensional and sounding the same kind of dynamic all the time. That of course is a bit complicated by the fact that sometimes you're playing full chords and sometimes you're playing single notes or two note chords or power chords. And you'll have to manage that a little bit more with grade two perhaps than with grade one because clearly sometimes with the big major and minor chords if you hit those really hard that might overwhelm the the overdrive that's coming out of your amp so you may well want to back off the uh, intensity of your playing for places like that you may not find that you've got the time to actually adjust the volume on your instrument but remember that how high your volume is on your guitar affects not just the sheer sense of the volume coming out of the amp but how much it becomes overdriven and so if you do uh, manage to start to explore that kind of thing you'll find that's a way that you can sort out the business of keeping a, a more consistent tone throughout the track and not having some of it sounding a bit thin and some of it sounding a bit overwhelmed. Now we're going to look at the technical exercises. I always suggest playing these with a more or less entirely clean sound on your amp and with a neck pickup to keep the sound nice and warm and just a little bit jazz-like. I also suggest take with a pinch of salt their suggestion that you don't need to memorise these by this grade where you're having to do patterns that aren't actually printed in there but you have to interpret from a different pattern. I would suggest if you're going to be at all serious about this game memorise your scales, it really is the simplest way. Now the metronome speed they're going to give you is 80 Fortunately, that actually exists on metronomes, unlike some of the other tempi they give. Here's 80. <coughs> I point out that it says they will give you a bar of click, but they haven't actually printed the scales with the time signature, so I would just assume 4-4 four, four time like we have on the metronome here. 2, 3, 4... G major, then we'll do C major, three, four. So with the one we've just done there, they printed G and they left you to work out C major. Great stuff. Next one's a little bit more logical. They print the A minor, the E minor, the E natural minor is simply the same pattern moved one string along. Here's the A natural minor. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
With the pentatonic minor scale, you haven't got any open strings to help you. So do remember that you're covering four frets. So use this as an opportunity to encourage your fourth finger to get involved perhaps more than it sometimes might want to do. So for example when you play the G minor pentatonic your first finger does the third fret, your fourth finger does the sixth fret, your third finger you can leave to the fifth fret. Same thing with the C minor when you get there. <coughs> Two, three, four. And then we'll do the C minor. Two, three, four. With the major pentatonics. The C major is the one they've printed. The G major one, you don't change strings, you simply go down to the third fret to start and then do the same pattern as you did further up the neck. Two, three, four. <laughs> I need to change my sixth string, it's making stupid noises. Here come the chords. Three note power chords to begin with. Please make sure you do that with finger one, then finger three, and finger four. That's how you play three note power chords. After that, just make sure that you hit all three strings, but not the third string on the other side, because that will sound pretty stupid. Also to point out two things. Firstly, you've got to be in time. Secondly, that you've got a crotchet or quarter note rest in between each of the chords. So don't let the chords ring into each other, stop them like I'm going to show you just now. Two, three, four. <laughs> You may feel the urge to put on a different kind of amp tone for your power chords. I really wouldn't bother, it's only an exercise. Um, the danger is, in the heat of the moment, you forget to, do, to, to put your amp back to a clean tone when you do the next chords. The major chords and the minor chords and so on, you really, really must play these with a clean tone. Sound absolutely horrendous if you do it with a significant amount of gain on. They don't suggest that you're going to need to play these chords um, that are coming up next up to tempo. It suggests as directed by the examiner, so I assume they'll say play this chord, and so you do. Remind yourself you only get one go at the chord, so make sure you're really used to keeping that finger nice and upright to make sure all the notes ring on. You won't get the chance to test it when you're doing it in the exam. Here's C major. <laughs> F major, G major, minor 7th chords, A minor 7th, D minor 7th, E minor 7th, new thing for the grade I think, major 7th chords, a major 7th, C major 7th, D major 7th. There is of course a kind of secret reason to be doing these slightly more exotic chords like the minor 7ths and the major 7ths, which is in future grades you'll be doing chord recall exercises where you might find yourself hearing one of these chords and having to recognise it obviously by ear um, as well as remembering the strummed rhythm but actually working out what the chord is so for example the difference between D major D normal 7th D major 7th 
or potentially D minor 7th. They're all subtly different and it'll be a big help if you can nail the right one. Then it's the riff. Again they've done the thing of printing the first part of the riff in one key and then giving you the starting note and telling you to play it starting on that note in a different key. Um, well it's G minor pentatonic and C minor pentatonic. Here's how it goes. One, two, one, two, three, four. So there's a few things to think about for grade two. I hope you found that useful and you have a great time playing your stuff for grade two. I hope you look at some of the other helpful things, hopefully helpful things that I've done for different grades and so on. And I hope to see you around for grade three.